Hey guys. Hello. How is everyone? Um, this is our eighth installment of Manic Mutt Monday's uh, Dog Training Live q and I'm actually almost on time this time. Yes. Getting better. Getting better. Um, my name is Kelly Zink and I am a dog trainer in Minnesota. I specialize in pet dog training, off-leash obedience, and behavior modification. This is, again, a live Q&A, so if you have any questions, you can definitely go ahead and ask. I will um, also be discussing a few things. I, already, I have two questions already, uh, but if you happen to jump on and you want to ask your own, feel free. I might not answer it right away, but I'll get to it as soon as... Uh, as soon as I'm done with these. Uh, I have two questions, and then I did post a video earlier. There's a video that has been going around. I think it's been all over my news feed, uh, shared, I think, like some 600 times, of uh, what looks like a little bulldog, like, attacking a... <laughs> and I don't mean to laugh. I shouldn't laugh. That's not, that's not nice to laugh. Um, but this little bulldog is all out really manhandling this this daycare employee um i'm going to put the video up actually and we'll just go ahead and start and talk about that um so the url is in the comments if you wanted to watch the video um but a few things so it's been all over and i think it's been shared by a ton of other dog trainers uh first of all I'm not surprised it's a bulldog. Uh, bulldogs have uh, are really known for their obsessiveness, right? Obsessive compulsive. They tend not to let go. They never say die. They are one of the few breeds out there that actually were bred to fight, legitly bred to fight all the way back until the 1600s. So uh, You've got about you know five six hundred years of, of genetics behind them. Uh, the particular dog looks like a young dog, right? So, and I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna take a gander, and I'm gonna guess that that dog gets a lot of really rough playtime with people at home. Lots of rough playtime. It's okay. I laughed my butt off. Yeah, Christine. I don't know. It, I mean, I felt bad, but I also was just like, really, really. Um, so could have been prevented, which I'm going to talk about, like such a ridiculous happenstance, so, such a ridiculous thing. Um, but again, I'm not, I'm not a surprise. It's a bulldog. I bet she plays tug all the time at home. Um, I bet she has no boundaries. I bet she's very untrained. I bet she's loved on and kissed and hugged and given the best food and the best bed and the best of everything. Um, and she clearly did not understand that the game was over. Right. I do think that in the beginning it started off as a game of talk. It started off as a game. You know, I don't think that she was all attempting to cause harm, at least in the beginning, uh, as it progressed, I think, uh, she got a little away with, you know, got away from herself a little bit. Uh, the grabbing at the hands, you know, that's, that, that's pretty heavy, but it's obviously not the first time she's practiced that behavior. So, uh, a little bit of blame on the owners, man. If you've got, I mean, I, I personally, I consider a bulldog, even English bulldogs to be a power breed, not necessarily because they're so physically powerful, but they are just like mentally powerful. Um, they don't back down. They don't, you know, they're again, never say die. Um, and they have extremely strong bites and they, have extremely strong jaws and really, really big teeth. So I do consider them a power breed. And so they're really, it's really important that if you own a dog like that, if you own a bulldog, particularly an old English bulldog, that was a little English bulldog, particularly one of the bigger breeds, like the old English bulldogs, you've got to have that shit under control from day one, day one. Um, so so there's that. I, I would be interested to see what what her life is like at home. But I can guess. Right. 
Um, I think it's interesting. You can tell the more that I do dog socialization and the more I'm around groups of dogs, I can tell by watching them play which dogs play a lot with people and which dogs play a lot with other dogs. I'm starting to see that, that kind of stuff. And particularly the dogs that, you know, they like other dogs, but they actually don't get a lot of play time with other dogs. You can kind of see how they play and you can see very clearly that they're used to playing with toys. Um, they're used to playing with people like roughhousing with people and they're used to playing fetch. Right. So it's, it's interesting to see that. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, it's one of those reasons why, and I, I did read one comment about it, about how that's why tug, tug is a bad thing, right? Because it can create that really crazy uh, tenacity, tenacious, uh, you know, biting and mouthing and not letting go and trying to always amp up the game. Um, that That's totally true if you're just playing tug without any rules or boundaries or limitations, right? Um, clearly that dog has no rules, boundaries, or limitations. <laughs> uh, so again, I, I would, I think there is some responsibility on the owner's part. And a lot of owners don't know that if your dog is at doggy daycare or your dog is at training, like if I have a dog here that's at training and it bites somebody, it's still the owner's responsibility legally. So um, how you relate to your dog at home is how your dog's going to relate to the world. So it's really, really important as dog owners that we prevent things like that from happening and prevent our dogs from hurting people. Uh, let's talk really quick too. I think that one of the biggest to blame though in that situation, the biggest lesson or the biggest, what gets me the most um, is the facility as a whole. Uh, they obviously don't train their employees at all. Uh, her, the girl, I, I mean, maybe it was her first day. I, I don't know. There was a lot of stuff going around that she was a trainer. She's not, a, I don't think she was a trainer. I think she was just a, she was an employee of, of the daycare. Um, but they are, again, obviously don't, they're not training their employees for any sort of a crisis situation. Um, Absolutely, there should have been somebody else in there. When you have more than one dog in a room, there should be more than one person in the room at all times. Uh, that's just basic. I don't know. That just comes from like back working with large predators. You always have a backup. You always have more than one eye on the dog. Um, so I, I, I'm wondering about that. Um, about why there's not somebody else there, you know? Um, the other thing is if any daycare situation, everybody, everybody, I personally at home, I have four dogs in my house right now. I have a leash within my grasp all the time, all the time. Um, if I'm working anywhere, anywhere I've worked with those dogs, it was always required that we always had leashes, whether it's a slip lean in our back pocket or, you know, a leash over or even just a traffic leash that we had hanging from our belts that you always had something to contain the dogs if you need to contain the dogs. Uh, and so I'm wondering where that is and where, where for the facility, where, where is their crisis mode? You know, where, I don't know, but just, it just boggles my mind. Um, and obviously again, they're training. Uh, if you have, a doggy daycare, if you are having a bunch of dogs that are strange dogs to strange people coming in and interacting with each other, you absolutely need to have some sort of training on how to deal with aggression, how to deal with body language, how to de-escalate de -escalate an escalated situation. Because clearly that girl does not know how to de-escalate an escalated situation. Um, so... I, yeah, that, that's just, it boggles my mind. And, and I guess that's a chain. I guess it's a, it's called a city dog club. And I guess they have a bunch of locations um, across the country. So I just, I, I, I criticize, I criticize you 
City Dog Club for not having a good safety protocols. Um, hi, Elizabeth. How are you? Hey, Jess. Yeah, yeah, Jess. The guy was laughing. Um, I, I chose not to comment on the dude. I mean, I don't really... I don't think the girl was in any immediate danger. I think she definitely was getting hurt. I think she definitely was in pain. If you look closely, I actually watched the original video, which was a, it's in an Instagram video. So you can see really clear. There is a hole in her shoe where that dog like ripped a hole in her shoe. Like that dog was legitly taking care of business. And so I'm, I'm sure she was in pain. Uh, again, though, I mean, I, I, I don't know. And yeah, the guy was laughing. He really wasn't doing what he could do. I don't think he should have been laughing at her for sure, but I don't think there's a whole lot he could do. He was he was an obvious uh, uh, spectator, a public, you know, a civilian. So um, my question, my biggest question is where's everybody else? You know, um, if you work with a group of dogs, you got to be on that. You got to see those problems before they even arise. And I will, it is very likely that the interaction to begin with did not start with the dog trying to engage with the girl. I don't know that for sure, but it is really likely that she came up to the dog, she's petting with the dog, she's kind of playing with the dog, and then the dog started to escalate into a dangerous state of mind. Um, which, if you're working at a doggy daycare, you should keep your petting to a minimum especially if you've got a lot of dogs coming and going that, that you don't know. Um, it's just a high, high arousing, high stimulating situation and adding affection to that, adding more stimulation is only going to make things worse. Um, yeah. I mean, they obviously don't train their employees. I don't know what else to say about that. Um, the situation could have definitely been completely different based on the girl's interact, like the girl's decision and her actions. Uh, I, I don't, you know, if you're the number one for me, like I think the biggest thing when I first saw it is, is that she's on the floor. Never get on the floor. Never, ever get on the floor in front of predators. I don't care. I don't care, <laughs> like, if it's dogs. Um, especially dogs you don't know, you know. Uh, never, ever, ever get on the floor. <laughs> Let yourself be on the floor. Um, plenty of times she could have jumped up and I think dove over the side of that gate. You know, when you're, when you're in danger like that, it's number one, stop the animal for long enough to get away. And you should have pepper spray. <laughs> but no. Um, yeah, I mean, just... Just neutralize the animal long enough to get away. And, and that's pretty much it. Um, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know. Get off the floor. Um, I think something that got me about it is that it was very obvious. There's two times that the dog bit her hand. And the last one was a good one. The last one really nailed her. Um, now, I don't think she, quote, unquote, deserved that, as some people are saying. I think it was a really, really big mistake on her part to be, I mean, she was up, she could have just got out of there, but she chose to sit there and still put her hands on that dog and still engage in conflict with that dog, only escalating the situation even more. Uh, something that got me about it, I watched it a lot and I felt like, I felt like she, especially in the beginning was, um, almost took the whole situation personally. Like she was really upset that she couldn't believe this dog was acting this way. You make me so proud. Oh, thank you, Christine. That makes me happy. Uh, I'm glad. Stay safe. Safety's number one. I haven't been bit really bad yet. Only once and the dog was muzzled. So happy you should know that. You should know you've kept me safe um, all these years, even though I haven't seen you in like a while. Um, yeah, I mean, she, she, it seemed like she was just, she was like taking it personally. Like she was mortified that, that the dog was kind of like acting out like a predator with her, you know? And 
just that alone, you know, it speaks to our society, how we view dogs and how we really don't take them seriously um, and how we kind of personify them and baby them and are kind of shocked when they actually, you know, when they, when they act like animals, you know, Um, now granted, I mean, we make those animals, right? I mean, I talked about the owners, man. I mean, there's a reason that that dog acts like that and it's probably not the daycare attendant, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was an interesting video. I, there's a lot of stuff going on about it. Um, so I heard when I first thought it was that they were making fun of pure positive training, which I've said some things about pure positive training recently, but, uh, I don't, I, she's not a dog trainer as far as I know. And I don't think that, I think that, I think that was a low blow on the balance side to, to be projecting that as if it was a pure positive trainer. It was obviously just a daycare attendant, which daycare attendants, people are not trainers. Um, though they should be taking training courses. They should be taking, uh, ethology courses. Um, and they should get paid more because it's a high demand field. I'm going to go ahead and read some comments here real quick. I've been uh, kind of ignoring them. Sorry. Um, just as her said, commented, um, we went to a craft fair yesterday. Lots of people bringing their dogs, but half the dogs were not concerned with people or dogs around them. The other half of the dogs went nuts. If another dog walked near them, if your dog isn't well with other dogs, should they be brought to an event like that? They didn't seem to be training or working with them from what I saw. Yeah, no. Um, no. No, the answer is no. They shouldn't be out. If they're not comfortable, they shouldn't be out to events like that. Um, I think that's another issue of our society with dogs is that we don't, you know, um, we ignore our dog's needs. Um, I can tell you that two of my dogs do not have want anything to do with going out to a crowd or going out to an event or going to a pack walk with a bunch of dogs or, or any, anything like that. They, they do not want to do that. They don't like it. It's too much for them. Uh, one of them doesn't like people. And one of them doesn't like other dogs. Um, and not that they don't like other dogs. It's not that they don't, they don't enjoy socializing with other dogs, but they don't want to go out to a place where there's going to be a bunch of dogs that aren't controlled, you know, um, for sure that that's, you know, I, I wouldn't bring my dogs out. And if now my foster, the Malinois could definitely go out to an event like that. Cause she would just ignore her. She wouldn't care. I mean, a dog could bark at her face and she'd be like, you know, she'd look up at me and be like, can we leave please? Cause that guy sucks which cool. Um, you know, she's a dog that you can take out, but I think that people, you know, they think, Oh, I'm going to take my dog out cause it's cool. Or they think their dog wants to, and they don't realize how stressful the situation can be. Um, particularly if the dog's never goes out, you know, if like the dog's been cooped up for the last nine months in the house and in the backyard, and then you decide you're going to take him to a craft show. I mean, it's going to freak the dog out. <laughs> the dog's going to have no idea what's going on and very likely be, uh, act outrageously, you know, cause you just kind of basically threw them, you know, threw them out in left field. And, um, so yeah, no, you're right. Jess. no, I don't, I don't think they should. I think if you want to be able to bring your dogs out in public, you need to start slow. You need to make sure your dogs are really good on walks. You need to make sure your dog can pass other dogs with no problem. First, you need to work on engagement. Um, you need to bring your, you need to give your dog an outlet too, which is huge, huge, is if you're going to go out to like a public event like that, spend an hour at the public event and then take your dog out somewhere and get, take him for a run, you know, play tug with them. Maybe if you can play tug without your dog eating a daycare attendant um, and uh, let them kind of burn that off, you know, cause it's, it's a lot for them. It's, it's, it's a lot just cause your dog's not doing anything. It still is a lot. Um, you know, and I think 
people don't read their dogs well enough and they don't understand and, and they don't take the time to prepare their dog for, uh, for life really sometimes I think, you know, um, Jess says I was surprised how many dogs like that I saw at a busy event, lots of people and dogs. I, th I think it's becoming just like a normal thing, you know, just sad which is not, not good. Um, I think it's becoming just kind of normal. Oh, my dog doesn't like other dogs. He barks. Oh, my dog is just, he's friendly. He's friendly. It's fine. Um, which is not good, which is not good at all. I mean, I think dogs should be able to go out and be around other dogs and people <coughs> without popping off. And if the dogs are popping off at other dogs, it's because they don't trust their owners. They're not, they're, they, they don't see their owners as being able to handle their control of the situation. So they're kind of in crisis mode, you know? Blue. No. Sorry. Blue's licking himself and driving me crazy. Licking his foot. Um, yeah. So it's an interesting video. I think it speaks a lot um, to a lot of different things. I don't think that the girl is in any mortal danger. Although I guess somebody just got like mauled by a bunch of small dogs recently, like a week ago. Um, apparently it was dachshunds, but I don't think it was really dachshunds. I think they just called them dachshunds because they were smaller and shorter legged and it made a good headline. But, you know, so I don't know. Horses will kick, cats will scratch and dogs will bite. Um, I do, I did have one question, um, and I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about it because I have a few clients right now that, um, are expecting babies. Um, little word of advice guys though, if you, if you're expecting a baby and you have some sort of behavioral issue with your dog that you're a little concerned about, um, super awesome to get a trainer in like six months before you have the baby got a few that that are like due very soon and are trying to like train their dog right now and deal with it right now and it's um fortunately nothing too crazy but you know if you need if you need a quick fix it's you're gonna be putting a lot of pressure on your dogs man um so just keep that in mind and it it, it may not happen when you need it to happen um but dogs and kids dogs and babies bringing new babies into the house um, can be really traumatizing for a dog, you know, especially when you're, you've got a young couple, they, you know, they get married and they get the dog cause it's like the, the precursor to having a, a baby, you know, and they raise the dog as if it was a baby, you know, they kind of treat the dog like a baby and like their, their kid, which is not bad to treat dogs like kids, but treat them like kids. Don't treat them like infants. Um, and, uh, what can happen, and I've seen it happen, is is the baby comes, and then all of a sudden that 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 first kid turns into just the damn dog. All of a sudden, when you have a human kid, um, the primate trumps the canine in the house, right? So it, they just they just turn into a dog, and all of a sudden the dog, who's been so used to all this attention and this routine and how things are, all of a sudden is completely thrown for a loop, right? Which is which is not fair to the dog. So one thing, if you if you are um, expecting a baby, start making plans and changing your routine well before that baby comes, right? Um, with, with, you know, parents, I, I say, you know, if whoever's having the kid, assuming a female, <laughs> um, their other partner should be taking up more of the dog responsibilities, right? And who's ever having the, the baby should be start to excuse me, should start kind of ignoring the dog a lot more, holding back on affection a lot, kind of being very um, neutral with the dog, right? Because what's going to happen when baby comes is they're going to be ignoring the dog a lot. <laughs> they're going to be neutral with the dog. Um, you're, they're going to be so overwhelmed with all the, you know, emotional, hormonal, and uh, craziness, as well as just the stress bomb of having an infant, you know, they're not going to have time to deal with the dog's emotional state. So it's best to just prepare the dog right away, prepare the dog um, sooner than later. So, so that it's not that big of a deal. Right. Um, 
which can mean, you know, having your, your partner take up the feeding, take up the walks, right? Um, get that dog on a schedule as if it would be. So if you are staying home and your partner's going to work, partner wakes up, does the food, does the walk, does some playtime, gets the dog settled in, puts the dog away, the dog stays away, maybe gets out once or twice to go potty until the partner comes back home, right? Because while you're home with your just your infant and your dogs, your dogs need to be chill. They need to stay out of your way and they need to be relaxed, right? Maybe have an hour or two in the middle of the day, not an hour, I guess. I mean, infants don't sleep, I mean, they kind of need a lot. So, you know, a 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there to go outside, run around a little bit, and then come back in and be on place or be in the kennel or just be chill um, until the partner comes home and then they can do dinner and they can do run around, they can go for walks and they can get the dogs kind of settled into bed. Um, that is the best schedule if you have a baby in the house um, or, or a new baby in the house. One of the biggest mistakes and the scariest things that we see as dog trainers is uh, when new parents allow their dog to be too close and involved with that baby. Scariest Facebook, Facebook videos ever. Freaking scary is when you've got the, the big dog and the baby and their head right here and they're like licking the baby and then they're looking at mom and the dog's like freaked out really the dog's like like kind of looking for attention because they're not really sure what's going on and the like, oh it's just your little brother oh he's so cute you know um that that's really really scary for us as dog trainers because we're just seeing like bloody kid faces um that are like two and three years old um dogs should really and I know this sound blue dude. No. <laughs> he's got a bowl in there and he's like flopping it around. It's making me crazy. Um, he's not used to me sitting here talking to the computer. So he's probably like, why are you not talking to me? What is going on? Um I forgot where I was. Um yeah, so one of the biggest mistakes is being too involved. Really, the dog should not be involved with that baby, right? That baby is your baby. Uh, you should be the boss of the house, right? You are the guider, director, and protector. Um, that baby is yours, so the dog should really have not a whole lot to do with that baby, right? Um, not only that, but the dog should really respect the baby. And what I mean by respect is by giving that baby a lot of space, right? If I'm hold, sitting here on the baby, dog's not allowed to come up. Dog needs to give me space, right? If I put the baby on the floor in a blankie, dog needs to stay away from that baby, right? Um, baby starts crying. Dog gets kind of worried, which is normal, normal for a dog to get kind of concerned, especially, you know, they, they, they want to know what's going on. And, you know, the dog kind of worried. I pick up my baby and I look at my dog and I say, no, 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 shh. Now, you know, let them know that they don't have to worry about the baby. It's not their job to worry about the baby. I like dogs in kennels, and I like them completely away from anywhere near the baby, especially at night. Um, I, if you're going to bring home a new baby, I prefer that you don't have your dogs in your bedroom, just in case. It's just a matter of safety. At some point, your young child is going to crawl out of their crib or crawl out of their bed and crawl into your room or walk into your room and maybe get distracted by your sleeping dog next to the bed and bam, little kid gets bit on accident, right? Um, it's just preventative. The dog should be away from the young kids, right? Um, not because I think that all dogs are inherently evil and they're going to eat kids, um, but it happens. They get nervous. They get scared, especially if the dog's not used to the kid crawling up and being all over them, um, they, they, they will react. So um, I think a lot of people, uh, they mistake their dog's concern about the baby. Or like, uh, I know that a lot of owners, they'd be like, oh, well, he loves to lick his face, and he's just always licking his fingers, and, and he loves the baby so much. You know, and I think that, Truly, the, the dog's not licking the baby's face and fingers because he loves the baby so much. The dog's licking the baby's face and fingers because their face and fingers taste really good. Because that kid is, has formula or breast milk on his face and his fingers. 
and has baby food on its face and fingers. And a dog can smell breath and lick and taste things that you've just eaten. You know, so the baby turns into kind of like a little smorgasbord of different tastes and smells and, and fun things. So, and we, we mistake that for like, oh, they're kissing and they love each other. No, the dog is licking your breast milk off your baby's face. That's what's happening. Um, so, and I, <laughs> but yeah. And the dog shouldn't do that. The dog should respect the baby by respect, giving the baby space, right? The baby is not a resource. When the baby becomes a resource, you've got huge problems. Um, one of like the worst things I cannot stand is seeing videos of small dogs curled up next to the baby and then literally like growling at the mother of that baby. Growling at the mother of that baby when she like tries to touch the baby or tries to pick up the baby and the dog's like, right. And that is so inappropriate and not okay. Right. You should, your dog should not guard your baby from you. That's, that's insane. Um, not only that, but what do you, if that dog thinks that that baby is her baby down the road, she's going to discipline that baby and that is not going to be pretty because how does a mama dog discipline her babies? She uses her mouth. And for puppies, it's not such a big deal because they're puppies and they've got thick skin and fur and they understand the language for an infant or a young toddler. It's going to be holes in their face and that is just not cool. And it can be completely prevented. So, long story short, four babies born, third trimester, that's three months, if you're unfamiliar, before the baby's born. Man, that kid. Three months before the baby's born, start ignoring the baby. First, not the baby. Don't ignore your baby. Ignore the dog. Um, act more neutral. The partner in the situation should take up more of the responsibility to get that dog on the schedule of how it's going to be when the baby is there, um, well before baby even comes. And keep your dog away from your baby. They should respect your baby. If you have a dog that's really, really well, does well with babies and it's really not a big deal and you really think that you don't have anything to worry about, still keep them a distance while the kid is really little. Well, the kid is very young. Um, once the kid is a little bit older and you've seen the dog kind of go through, okay, it's new. And then it's kind of weird. And then they're kind of like adjusted once you dog your, you, excuse me, once you know that your dog is very adjusted, then you can start organically letting the dog interact with the baby a little bit. Right. But with those, when those babies are young and they're roly poly and not walking and anything like that, you know, really before the age of two or three, they should just be, be separate. Not separate as in like completely in separate rooms, but the dog should pretty much be pretty neutral with the baby. Um, I know that there's this idea that you want the baby to, the dog and the baby to grow up and be, you know, best friends. Um, that's a great thing. It's a great thing. But you're your dog and your baby really aren't going to have that relationship until your child is well old enough to have that type of emotional relationship. And your dog is old enough and mature enough to have that type of emotional relationship. Um, you know, it's not appropriate for you to just leave it up to them to work that out and kind of create this awesome bond. That's going to happen organically or it's not going to happen. Either way is okay. It's just, it is what it is. Um, I would much rather have families with dogs that pretty much are neutral with the kids, but can be a part of the, the entire family and go to the cabin and go to Little League games and be a part of the family than have dogs that are completely obsessed with the kids, but can't go out of the house and do anything, you know, can't be around, you know, the kids' friends, you know, um, growling at parents. Shit. Oh my God. That's crazy. Um, 
it's 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 just it's much better and you have to remember that your dog's not responsible enough to take that relationship on right if you've got a young kid a young toddler and you've got let's say a three four or five year old dog it's like the equivalent of leaving your four-year-old responsible for your one-year-old you don't do that right as the kids and the dogs grow older yeah maybe i mean i would let my my 10 year old be responsible for my six year old if they were like you know as long as i was home and within the vicinity you know but you're not gonna you're not gonna do it with kids that are younger it's just it it's not gonna help you any or help the relationship any by letting them just coexist together and be all over each other it's just gonna make it worse um plus again we're dog trainers that's again i should preface all of this by saying that i'm a dog trainer you nobody calls me to tell me that the kids and the dogs are getting along great they just don't they told me to tell me that like the recent call I have my, my most recent client that the dog bit the 10 year old, 10 month old in the head. Not cool. Um, I also had another client that had a, the dog was about a year old and the kid was like six and they got the dog as a puppy. They had, they adopted it from a rescue dog and the kid were just roly poly together all the time, like wrestling constantly, constantly physical with each other, constantly together. And their parents were so excited because they had, you know, this great relationship. And one day the, the dog was chewing on a bone and the kid came over and laid down next to the dog, didn't touch the dog, but laid down next to the dog with uh, a toy and the dog turned and snapped and bit the kid in the head. Right. Um, and what happened was that because that dog and that kid were always so physical, that's what that relationship meant to that dog, right? That's what that, the relationship was. You're my equal. We play. We're brothers, for lack of a better word. It's not really what the dog thought. But the, the dog saw them as equals, right, as friends. And their relationship represented a physical relationship. So when he had something that he wanted to keep to himself and he wanted some space, and the kid comes on and is near him because that – relationship represents physical wrestling the dog was proactive and wanted to prevent that no i want to be over here with my thing i want you to get away boom right and if that kid was another dog that would have been a very appropriate response you know that would have been something that, that i wouldn't be concerned about if i was a dog trainer and i saw that with another dog but because it was a kid it's it's it was bad he got stitches in his head you know so things to think about those are all my questions and then my spiel about the little bulldog going, going rabbit on the poor daycare attendant. <laughs> if you haven't watched the video, it's in my comments. You can go ahead and, and, and watch it. Um, I will take any questions right now. Come on, you know you've got questions. Come on. I can also just keep talking. I can also keep talking. Um, or I could actually go get some work done also. Um, started blue on the e-collar today. It's fun. Not really that exciting. Collar conditioning is very not sexy. Very not sexy. All right, y'all. Well, if I don't have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and cut this short. I... Uh, got some work to do um please like this and share this if you like what you heard um again my name is kelly with good dogs minnesota um and we will be on next monday for uh our ninth installment i suppose thomas is tripping over thor's place <laughs> Uh, well, he's so damn big. What can you do? What can you do? The kids will probably lay on that thing. Be careful. <laughs> Be careful of that. That's the one thing I have about those places, like any, um, pet cats, is that for little kids, they look like trampolines. So, I, it's a constant battle in my house to get off of the place cat. They don't listen. I don't know. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this short. I have some work to do. So thank you for watching. If you have any dog training questions, you can go ahead and you can post them here and I can answer them next week. You could just hit me up next week when you, or tune in next week live. Um, you can also email me and PM me, right? So anything, I will find it wherever it's at and I will answer it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go. You guys have a good night and we'll see you next week. Bye.